Hello everybody out there in the bookverse, it's Stephanie and today I'm going to be doing a video that I've seen a lot of people do on a yearly basis and that is a favorites video. So this video I'm going to be talking about my favorite standalone books. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for watching my videos. If you'd like to see more from me, definitely hit the subscribe button down below and the bell icon so you'll be notified when I post new content. But let's jump into these books. I picked, how many? I picked my top 10 favorite standalone books. So I'm really excited to talk about these books with you. They're all books I absolutely adore. Like they're up there, they're amazing. And I would highly recommend them to everybody. <laughs> So the first book on this list is the only one that I don't actually own, and that is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I read this book a few times when I was younger, and I think the last time that I read it was when I was in college, and I don't actually own a copy because I always read my sister's copy of this book when I would read it, but I absolutely love this story. I love the characters in here, and I love the romance aspect to it as well. If you don't know, this is primarily a historical romance story between Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy and I just can't get enough of those people, that world. I absolutely love Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth is just a little bit sassy and a little bit stubborn and I love her as well. I think Jane Austen is amazing at writing these flawed characters that you're still so invested in and you want to know more about their lives and you want to see them happy, see them succeed and everything even though you can see the problematic areas within these characters as well. She's very great at making you root for all of the characters in this book. So my favorite Jane Austen novel, I haven't read all of hers yet, but so far Pride and Prejudice, I know it's kind of a cliche classic pick, but I absolutely love that book. And I figure I might as well stick all the classics together here at the beginning. So we're jumping to another classic that I absolutely love. I just read it for the first time this year, actually. And that is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This book follows a young woman who meets this very rich man while she is on vacation and ends up marrying him and going away with him to his estate called Manderley. And he has a deceased wife named Rebecca, who is pretty much everywhere in this house. This house is like all about Rebecca. The people in it are obsessed with Rebecca. Everybody talks about Rebecca all the time. This young girl thinks about Rebecca all the time. So it's really just gets deep into the mindset of this young woman as she is trying to become a new wife and a mistress of a household and everything is so focused on his dead wife. I'd say this is a gothic mystery thriller book. There is some twist elements that come into this book. It's very thrilling later on, but at the beginning it's very focused on character development and getting you into this atmosphere of this creepy gothic house that is stuck in this world of Rebecca. You feel this almost ghostly presence of her and it is fascinating. This book is so well written. I love Daphne du Maurier's prose. She is masterful at making you be really invested in a very slow moving book. And I saw some of the twists coming. I didn't see others coming, but I just think this was so well written. I was on the edge of my seat. I loved it. It was beautiful. The gothic vibes were amazing. And I just absolutely adored my time in this book. The last classic on this list is actually my absolute favorite classic of all time, and that is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. This is actually the abridged version that I read in high school, and I have the unabridged version that I have read as well, but I lent it to my mom. I feel like that's a very common thing that's happening in a lot of my videos that I filmed lately, but this book is really a story of revenge. It is about this man named Edmond Dantes who is wrongly accused of a crime and is sentenced to life in this very horrible prison, but he meets this man who teaches him how to fight and teaches him how to read and all these things. And then he ends up escaping and going out to get his revenge on these people who put him there. And it is so good. You're just like, mm, yes, it's this very intricately designed revenge. And he's really put a lot of time and effort into making this revenge 
perfect and to not making it quick deaths for them but really destroying these people's lives and I love it. It is so good. It is so well written. The characters like you hate some of them and you absolutely adore other ones and just how clever this book is is amazing. I absolutely adored every second of it. The unabridged book is over a thousand pages long and in high school I busted through that thing in less than a week. I love this story so much. It's one of my absolute favorites of all time. I can't get enough of it. I kind of want like a retelling of The Count of Monte Cristo. I want someone to write a retelling of it because I know that's something that's very popular nowadays and a lot of authors are writing retellings. Do one of this book, make it really, really good. I would love that. I absolutely adore this. I haven't read anything else by this author though, which is strange because it's one of my favorite books of all time. I would highly, highly recommend this book to anybody. It is really good. It takes a little bit to get into the writing style, of course, because it is a classic, but it is so good. It is so worth it. And I absolutely adore this book. The next book on this list is an adult fantasy book. It's actually an adult urban fantasy book. And that is Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. I honestly really, really enjoy Neil Gaiman's works. I love so many of them, but I think this is my absolute favorite that he's ever written. And I, a lot of it is the atmosphere of it. That is something that I absolutely love. I just love feeling the magicalness of these fantasy books. The main character in this book is just such an average Joe guy and he gets thrown into this ex kind of brutal magical world and has to survive and also be almost a hero of it, which is amazing. And I think it's so funny in some of the really realistic portrayals of how terrified he is as he's going through all the things he has to do in order to save the world is hilarious. I love it. I think it's really well done. You're like, yes, I can feel that. I feel for him. And that was something that really drew me into this book as well. I think the character work in here was spot on. I love Neil Gaiman's writing style. It's so unique and different. It's beautiful, but in a very different way. It doesn't feel like the purple prose flowing beauty, but it's so different that it weaves you into the story and makes you just feel like you're there, feel the investment in these characters, feel the presence of this magic in this world. And I absolutely adore that about Neil Gaiman's writing style. I also really love some of the twists that happened in here and the different ways that we learned about this world as we were going and you weren't sure who to trust. It had that that feeling of being suspicious of everybody and not knowing who was going to betray you and that was great. I love that about this book because the whole time you're like, well, is he the bad? Is he bad? Like, is he going to betray us? Is he a spy? Is he working for the other side? I don't know. Like, is she going to kill me? Is she going to stab me in the back? It was so well done because you never knew. And that helped you build the suspense as you were going to the big finale. I didn't see a lot of things coming. I think the bad guys in this book too were really well portrayed in the way that they were just plain brutal and evil and so you knew what you were getting with them and you knew that you could not get caught so that was fun it was a very fast paced book I felt like the pacing was excellent in this book I was really invested and that as these characters were learning about the world we were also on the adventure we were doing things we were going and I love that so I would highly recommend this book I think if you want to jump into some Neil Gaiman books you should start with Neverwhere. Next book on the list is a historical urban fantasy, which is something that I have discovered I really, really love and enjoy. And that is The Gollum and the Genie by Helen Wecker. I have never read anything else by this author. This is the only book and I have never seen anyone else talk about it either. I feel like this is just something that I picked up at this little bookstore in this small town and fell completely in love with. So I loved the cover. That's ultimately what got me on this book. It just has that dark, creepy atmosphere where something magical or something bad could be happening. And I like that. It kind of gave me a little bit of Shadow of the Wind vibes too, which is also in its favor because I love that book. But this follows a golem who is created overseas, brought to America, and then is on her own. And it also follows this genie whose lamp was brought over to America as well. And he is trying to adapt to modern times and their lives intertwine. And I 
felt the magic in this book. That is something that I need in my books. I need to be able to feel that magic, feel that investment in this world. And I really loved learning the genie's backstory and getting it to go over to his past and live in that as well because it was so beautiful and I love that atmosphere of it. I loved that part of it so much. I liked the connections and the twists. It took a lot of development to get to that point and you couldn't really have seen it coming even though you're suspecting certain things of characters when you get the reveal as to how everything came about to where it is. It's so good. It's shocking and very satisfying and I absolutely loved this book. I think the character development with the Gollum and the Genie were extremely well done and I absolutely loved that. And I think the historical like very early 1900s New York was a great setting for this story and you could have the magic as well as having this historical setting and I just think they meshed so well for the story and it was great. It was, it was spot on. It was well written. It was beautiful. The characters were great, the twists were great, the backstories were amazing. I loved it all. So if you love historical books and you want a little bit of fantasy thrown in, this is one of the best that I personally have found. The next book on this list is by an author that is the only author to make this onto this list twice, and that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Erin Morgenstern is just a writer that has such beautiful prose, and I absolutely love her writing style so much. The way she writes makes her books feel magical. It makes the magic just jump out of the page, and you are living in this world, and I love that aspect so much. I feel like I could like smell everything at this circus. I feel that I could see it, I could hear it. Everything came to life so beautifully in this book. It follows these two magicians who are in this competition and really they are kind of developing this magical circus that only appears at night. And we don't really know the point of this competition. We don't really know the end game of this competition. We're just going along with them as they are thrown into this and they are forced to compete and develop this magical circus, different attractions, kind of show who has the better magic as they go along making all the different things within the circus. Now I personally really enjoyed the romance in this book. I know that's a problem for a lot of people. They don't get invested in it, but I loved it. I loved the ambiguity as well, which is rare because I feel like a lot of my favorite books have very hard magic systems and they're very easy to understand the magic, but this magic is just vague and it's beautiful and you don't really know how it works. And I think that that fit this atmosphere so well in this story. It was just perfect. And I did love how how Aaron Morgenstern executed that, but really it was mainly the atmosphere and the characters in this book that I loved the most. It was so beautiful and the characters were very gripping for me. I felt like I was in their lives, I was invested in what was happening, and I really wanted them to succeed. I know that in a lot of books I don't care quite as much, but I still love the story. But in this one, I loved the characters, and I think the way that their worlds were woven together was absolutely beautiful. So I absolutely love this book. It is so good. It is, oh, it's amazing. It's just, If you want a beautiful read that you can get lost in, jump into the Night Circus. It's one of my favorites of all time. <laughs> And another of my favorites by Erin Morgenstern, no surprise, is The Starless Sea. Again, the writing is gorgeous. It pulls you in to this magical world and you feel like you just get lost in it. And I love that about Erin Morgenstern's writing style. It's amazing. This book pretty much follows this young man who, when he was a child, found a door, decided not to go through it, but then later in life finds a book that tells about his experience finding this door and not going through it. And that leads him on an adventure to find these mysterious people, this mysterious society, and this mysterious starless sea area. It has a lot to do with books and stories. The telling of stories has very entertaining cats that I absolutely love. And there are great characters in here that you just don't know they are as complex as they are. And then the development comes and it's mind-blowing and I absolutely love it. This book also has a fairly soft magic system where things are fluid and the magic kind of does what it wants and I loved it because I felt like it was so beautiful and it matched the story so well. 
and I was just lost in it. I was lost in the story. I love books about books. I love books about libraries. I'm a nerd. I love reading. So I love that in books as well. And I really enjoyed the main character because he was just kind of this nerd, but he was also fun to follow and he was entertaining. So this book is gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's a little bit longer. So if you want to try out Aaron Morgenstern, I would recommend starting with The Night Circus. But if you want to try out Aaron Morgenstern because of her book about books, this is beautiful. It's so amazing amazing and I absolutely love it. Next we have Uprooted by Naomi Novik. This book is about a young girl who lives in a village where every 10 years this wizard requires the sacrifice of one girl. She goes and lives with him for 10 years and then really she never comes back to live in her village after that and no one knows what happens and they all think it's going to be her beautiful best friend who gets chosen but he ends up choosing her. So she goes to live with this wizard in the tower and she learns more about herself. Things develop from there. I absolutely love this book because of the fairy tale-esque atmosphere of it and also this book features a magical wood which y'all know I am a sucker for that trope. I absolutely love a good magical wood <laughs> in my books and I love that about this book. Oddly enough, I didn't love the characters all that much. I think our main character was fine. I really enjoyed following her and she was fun, but I wasn't really invested in the romance in this book and I wasn't super, super invested in our main character either. It was really the fairy tale feel to this and the story, the plot line, the magic, and that magical wood that I was so, I was into it, guys. I was there for it. I loved it. It was beautifully done, and I feel like I need more books like this, more fairy tale-esque books. They just feel like magic. Again, I think I'm seeing this common theme that I love books that feel magical. And that's where this book really hit it for me. A book that I've recently read that I'm sure no one is surprised is on this list is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is her adult fantasy book about a young woman who makes a deal with the devil in order to live forever to escape this marriage that she does not want. But the consequence is that she will not be remembered by anybody and she can't leave a mark on the world. So we spend time with her both in the past when she has recently made this deal, through many, many years as she learns how this deal works, the ins and outs of it, how to survive with all the problems. Like you can't have a house if you can't be remembered because no one will remember that that's your house. You know, just little things like that that actually are a really big deal. Then we have the present time in New York where she has walked into a bookstore and found a man who actually remembers her. Now, my favorite part of this book was the past. I really love historical fantasy and this book nails that historical fantasy when we're in these past settings. She has these great bantery interactions with Luke, the devil who she made this deal with. I love it. I love how sassy she is. I love how strong she is. She's just this fierce main character who is so determined to live her best life regardless of this devil who is trying to tear her down. She just is having none of that and I absolutely love that about her in this book. And then I do enjoy the future time as well when she's spending time with this boy who remembers her. She is feeling this connection to another human being that she's been missing for hundreds of years and he just becomes the center of her world. I think it was beautiful and it spoke a lot to basic human needs for social interactions and for social connections to feel remembered and loved and valued by other human beings. So that was really well explored in this book and I just I loved the magical feel of it. It was very well written. It was beautiful. I loved the writing style in this book, which I feel like is different than other V.E. Schwab books I have read, but I enjoyed it a lot. The pacing was really great as well, and I was really invested the whole time. I read this one really quickly. I think that's a theme for most of these books is that I get super invested in them and I bust through them because I love them so much. But this book just has that amazing, fantastical feel to it as you are living in the real world. So she feels like she's the only person experiencing this magic in a common mundane world and I love that about it. So I think this was well written. I love the execution and I, I love the ending which is something I was worried about in this book but I actually really enjoyed how this book ended. So that has put it onto one of my favorite books of all time list. And the last book on this list is so very different than the rest of the books on this list and that is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This is a 
psychological thriller. It has sci-fi elements to it. And it was just really intriguing. I had to know what happened. I was so invested in it. And at first I was reading, I'm like, okay, this is interesting. And then I was like, oh, I can see the twist coming. But no, like you think, oh, that's the twist. But then the twist comes and it's crazy and you can't put it down. You have to know what happens. Without giving away spoilers, basically this book is about a man who is a scientist at this university. He has a very normal life. He has a wife and a kid and then one day he gets kidnapped, goes unconscious, wakes up, and he is in this place where everyone seems to know him and it seems normal that he's there but he has no clue who any of them are and he doesn't know what he's doing there. So that's basically where it starts and then it just gets crazy from there and you just really won't be able to put it down once you get to that part, in my opinion. I love this book because of how suspenseful it was. The thriller aspects were so well executed. I absolutely love that. It was extremely fast paced. Like you don't get bored in this book. There's no slow character development going on. We are just trying to survive this book and busting through to the end. So I absolutely love the story so much and I would highly recommend it if you like thrillers and it's not super hard on the sci-fi. It's very easy to understand. It doesn't match the other books on this list but it is one of my favorites of all time and I absolutely love it. Highly, highly recommend. So that completes the list of my favorite standalones of all time. Let me know what your favorite standalone is. And if you have read any of my favorite standalones, let me down, know down in the comments what you think. And as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more from me, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.